With Julius Jones' execution set for two days from now, you can imagine what his mom is going through. Madeline Jones tried to get a word in with the only man who can stop it, the Oklahoma governor, Kevin Stitt. But the governor wouldn't see her, although his chief of communications would see her. So, we've received your letter. The governor's got to take it into consideration. We've got a process. I'm not going to be made. Are you saying that the governor did not agree to meet with the Jones family? That's got to hurt. That's literally the governor's door um, being slammed uh, with Madeline Jones, the mom of Julius Jones, right out, outside. But Julius's sister, Antoinette, also has something to say. And she is live with me now, actually en route uh, to what might be her last visit um, with her brother. It's really hard to say that. Antoinette, I know you're at a hotel um, on your way to possibly seeing your brother. Thank you for, for joining me. How is Julius doing? Uh, honestly, he is uh, frustrated um, that it's taking this long for the governor to make a decision. Um, so a little context, um, for the second time on November the 1st, uh, the appointed uh, partner parole board of Governor Stitt voted 3-1 uh, in favor of Julius having life with the possibility of parole. They admitted that they continue to see doubt in Julius's case of, of his conviction. Um, that is very important um, to us. Um, he appointed at least three of the five members. Um, he said clemency was, was the best way for uh, death row inmates and that he will swiftly make a decision upon the clemency. And I'm just wondering what his swiftness means. Um, Julius is currently on death watch, which means he has lights on him 24-7. You know, he has limited supplies. Um, it's been proven that Julius is innocent. We're asking Governor Stitt for mercy and for him to adopt the recommendation that his appointed partner parole board members uh, voted on on November the 1st. So it's... it's it's that, very that's what's amazing, Antoinette. That is really what's amazing, that the Board of Pardons and Paroles voted and said, this guy uh, shouldn't be executed. Five local Republicans who are not known for being anti-death penalty said, this guy shouldn't be executed. And then there's the matter of the actual case. I'm going to summarize a few things that, that might surprise a lot of viewers. Um, there was a, a, an only eyewitness uh, to this crime uh, was the, the sister of the, of the victim who said that there was about an inch worth of um, visible hair, uh, meaning there was a, an inch long space where hair could be seen. And Julius had a photograph uh, three days prior to this crime where he had his head shaven no hair. That did not get before the jury, which is, is quite surprising. Uh, Julius was uh, home that night with all of you, your whole family. Um, but you, not one of you, testified because the lawyer that Julius had, who'd never handled a death penalty case, didn't call you, didn't call any witnesses in, in his case. Um, and then fell on the sword and said, ineffective assistance of counsel, I made loads of mistakes in this case. Uh, there was an ethnic slur uh, by uh, one of the uh, jurors in the case, a ethnic slur against Julius. 11 of the 12 uh, jurors were white. Um, all of that is, is really distressing. And then there's this little moment, and I'm going to play this if I can, Antoinette. This is a, a guy named Roderick Wellesley, who was a fellow prisoner. Um, and he said that the real killer was the guy who was with Julius that night, who made a deal with prosecutors and got 15 years for pointing the finger at, at your brother. But that guy... Uh, he apparently, Christopher Jordan, told loads of people, disinterested people, that he was the killer. Here he is telling um, Roderick Wellesley, and here's Roderick Wellesley describing it. Me and uh, Jordan had worked together over there at, at the store at Brickers. And it was just, like I said, one day we sitting there, and I'm telling him about my situation. He pretty much told me about his, because at, at the time, I didn't even know he had the murder charge. You know what I'm saying? So... 
it was pretty much like, I guess you could say he was, uh, at the time, being sort of remorseful, but it was one of the cases where I'm sorry, but I'm not going to jump out there and just, you know, throw myself to the wolves like that. They, Antoinette, that's really interesting to hear that because many of the people that apparently uh, Christopher Jordan had, you know, <laughs> admitted that he was the killer to had no dog in the fight. They weren't going to get a bonus from a prosecutor on a sentence, which is usually the jailhouse rat story, right? But there is this issue of the red bandana that your brother owned. It was a red bandana with your brother's DNA on it, and the murder weapon was wrapped in it, and it was in Julius's home. Uh, I know Christopher Jordan spent the night there, but it's pretty hard to get past that piece of evidence. Yes, ma'am. So it's important for people to realize that uh, Christopher Jordan admitted to planning the murder weapon and the bandana. It is very important, though, on, uh, to realize that on the DNA report, it was just, it's basically saying that, it, that Julius's DNA could not be excluded from the report. Um, I would, I'm not, a, I'm not a forensics expert, but it's basically saying it's inconclusive if you go by FBI standards. And I will refer Antoinette, to do you and your mom and your, the lawyers. Do, so I'm sorry to interrupt. I want to just ask you, do you and your mom and the rest of your family think that the governor is going to grant clemency to your brother? We are optimistic and hopeful that he will. Um, there's so much reasonable doubt that it's, it's, evidence is pointing away from Julius further, especially from November the, the, November the 1st uh, clemency hearing. We are praying that he takes all evidence into consideration and that he rules in Julius's favor with the, uh, with the recommendation that his, his partner parole board ruled on which was life with the possibility of parole. Well, I'm Antoinette, I am thinking too. of, um, we're seeing a picture of your mom there, and uh, I'm thinking of her, and I'm thinking of you. Um, you don't deserve this. You have nothing to do with any of this, and this is, this is hell for families uh, to go through. So I thank you for taking the time amidst your travel to, to see your brother, and I'd like to check in with you to find out how your visit goes, if that's okay. Thanks, Antoinette. Yes, Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.